I've been talking a lot about, a lot about air tightness uh, uh, in general about the membranes that could be used to achieve air tightness and now you need information regarding the tapes because from my, from my point of view the tapes are the most important part of an air tightness layer because with the function or non-function of the tapes an air tightness layer an air tightness, air tightness could be achieved or even not so and that's what I want to explain the demands <coughs> and the things that the tapes have to fulfill and the things that we undertake to, to make the constructions secure regarding the durability of the tapes. At first I want, would like to describe you the function of the thin layer, the thin glue layer that is on the backing of the tape. And here, this is the test Vana tape. When you release the release paper, then you can see <laughs> Then you can see the thin layer of glue. It's a little bit shiny. And the other one is the backing, so the layer is rather thin. And in this thin layer, uh, different forces are working. And the forces could be very described, could be described easily with honey and this stone. So, two forces are working in this thin layer. The first, the first one is the cohesion force. The second one is the adhesion force. So the stone itself has got a very good cohesion, a high inner strength. I'm not able to expand the stone even if I pull very hard. It's not, I'm not able to, ex to, ex to expand it. So the cohesion force within the stone is very high. Honey, this is runny honey, runny, runny honey. So if you, I could, if you have a closer look, then you can see that if I turn it vice versa, the air is moving to the top always. So, but if you, if you spill the honey on the breakfast table, it's very hard to remove it again. So it has got a very high adhesion on a lot of surfaces, but a very low cohesion because it, if I open the glass, I could empty the glass very easily here, but it's not good for the carpet, I guess. <laughs> so, cohesion is low if the material could not carry a high load, a high strength and adhesion is high when the material is able to stick on different surfaces. So, and this, the stone is not sticky. So it has no adhesion. If we consider our tape, then we have got the backing, the blue one, the thin layer and within this thin layer, both forces that I've described with the honey and the stone are working within this thin glue layer. So the cohesion is working in the layer and the adhesion is working between the backing and the glue and the substrate and the glue. And the substrate could be a wood fiber board, a PE foil, even mineral surfaces, surfaces, and if we are developing a, a, a tape, then we have to find the best combination between adhesion and cohesion because we want to stick the tape on nearly every surf surface and we want, to we, want to, we want it to carry high loads if necessary because if we see the overlappings, they should not open themselves under the influence of, uh, influence of the weight of the insulation material, for instance. So this is what we are doing when we are developing tapes. So now you know which forces are working within this thin layer, but there are also failures. The first one is the adhesion break. The easiest way to describe it is to remove the release paper. This is an adhesion break. And you have to apply it every time you are working with tapes, because otherwise you will not be able to remove the release paper. But you are not able to remove the backing. It's connected very well to the, to the glue itself. So, the adhesion break is removing the release paper from the tape itself. Do we want to have an adhesion break on our building sites once we have glued it to our air tightness membrane? No, no. We want, we want the tape to stay on our air tightness membrane, on our air tightness layer, because otherwise we, wouldn't not, we would not have air tightness anymore. So, the second one is the cohesion break. 
So just remember the honey with a low cohesion. So if I release the paper and I put it somewhere onto a membrane, and it would be very easy to release the tape again from the air tightness layer, do we want to have this effect? No, we need a tape with a rather high cohesion because otherwise it could be possible that the tape gets off the surface and we have got glue on the membrane as well as glue on the backing. This is what we have to avoid as well. So our glue has to carry a high load due to the, 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 surrounding, the surrounding weights that are influencing our taped overlapping, for instance. And the last one is the material failure. So the cohesion is okay, the adhesion is okay, and when we try to remove the tape, the material breaks. And this is the failure that we want to achieve. So if somebody tries to remove the tape, then the connection needs to be so good that the material breaks. I will show it you later and how it works. So if we are developing a glue for a tape, then it should be very sticky and very hard concerning the cohesion to stay on our membranes, which is very important for the durability of the air tightness because we need about 50, 60, 70 years of air tightness until the next refurbishment is, has, will be done. So this is a standard situation in pitched roofs. And here you can see with the blue arrows that the insulation tries to open overlappings because it has got, has got a certain weight. And this problem is increasing when the insulation is rather heavy. So wood fiber insulation, for instance, or hemp have got a rather high weight. And or, or for instance, cellulose insulation. And they try to open the overlappings because the weight is in the direction of, of the Earth. And then you get shear forces working in our tape that try to open the tape if it couldn't carry high cohesion loads. These effects we try to examine when we were performing tests regarding the load that the tape could carry. This is a very easy, easy test for, right from the beginning. And we used the Tescanvana tape in comparison with three other tapes from competitors. And we used a PE foil and we, we glued it to the tape. And this PE foil was connected with uh, timber pieces of 200 grams. And then we put it upwards and waited a couple of days and then we saw that the weight of 200 grams is pulling the PE foil from the tape. You can see this with the lines marked. They show how the different tapes react concerning the influence of the weight after a couple of days. Tapes are behaving differently concerning the cohesive cohesive energy that they could, the cohesive load that they could carry. So the Tesconvana, obviously the PE foil strip only moved a couple of millimeters. Here with the white one, five millimeters. The green one, about a centimeter. And the last one, more than one centimeter. So obviously the different tapes are reacting differently under the weight of 200 grams. So these were only four tapes that we have tested and we have extended it to 47. 47 different tapes we have tested under these conditions to find out which tape could, could last for a long time, could resist the weight of 200 grams uh, for a last time, and which don't. And we installed the tapes on Friday, and this is the picture that we have taken on Monday. So the first three specimens lost the contact to the tape. 47 different tapes we have tested with a weight of 200 grams. And this is the situation after two years. After two years, only a few specimens were hanging. The, weight, the weights were hanging on the tapes. And here is the summary of what happened during the two years. Within the first seven days, 10 adhesive tapes lost the contact to the weight. After four weeks, 16 tapes lost the contact to the weight. So obviously these glues are rather smooth. They are not able to carry the load of 200 grams. After three months, 24 specimens lost the contact to the weight. So half of the tapes were not able to carry the load of 200 grams for three months. And then after six months, we lost 12 more. And now between six and 24 months, I would say, we lost four more adhesive tapes. These tapes are, could resist an unforeseen load that could be caused by insulation material rather good. 
But at the end, this is most important, still, still seven tapes were still resisting the force of the 200 gram timber weight and they were still there. And thank goodness, three of these tapes, we've tested the, Intello, uh, and the, the uni tape, the Tescan Vana and the Tescan number one, could resist the load of 200 grams. But what does it say? We have to, we need to expect influences on our taping. As I described, the weight of the material, the weight of the insulation material, is causing an effect of, to our overlappings. They try to open the overlapping, and, and the harder, the harder the glue, the more, co the higher cohesion forces it could carry. The better it is for the durability of the air tightness, because if the overlapping loses the connection, if the overlapping opens, then the air tightness would be affected. And the problem is that you can't see it. It's hidden behind the gypsum board, or behind timber, whatever. You can't see it anymore. Probably you can feel it. After a couple of years, you can feel air streams going into your house when it's windy. And you thought, OK, I have taped my overlappings and all connections to adjacent building materials very properly. How, do, how is it possible? And that's why you have to search for a glue that could carry high, that could carry high loads, that offers high cohesion forces in comparison with a tape that has got a very good adhesion to the different surfaces that occur on, at the building site. Foils, wood fiber boards, OSB, for instance. And this is what you have to always have to keep in mind when, when, uh, um, <coughs> decide, when fail the decision which tape you want to use. If I would sell tapes, I would always give you the competitor's tape at first, and then you can, you can check the initial tag with your thumb. Here, press on it. Oh, it's not that sticky. And then I would forward my tape, so the grease is gone from the thumb, and you can use it for a second time and say, oh, this is much better. Oh, yeah, 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 good idea. <laughs> but this is not an airtightness test. <laughs> and this is not a test that is good to find out how a tape reacts under certain, certain, certain conditions like uh, resisting a load caused by insulation materials, for instance. Durability needs to be tested in another way as well. Because, of course, tapes have to carry unforeseen loads. And the other test is that tapes needs to have a very high durability because we know that the plastic that is contained in the glue is aging after a couple of years and it's aging far quicker when you are adding resins, resins? I, don't, I don't know how to pronounce it in English I, resins? resins, resins, okay, or resins to your, to your glue um, to make it more sticky, to, to develop the impression that the tape is very sticky. Then they are adding resins to the tape. It makes it possible to glue nearly on every, every surface. Even worse, weak surfaces could be, could be glued with tapes with a high content <coughs> of resins. But the resins have got a problem. They are aging very quickly. And once the resins are aged very quickly, the tape is getting, the glue is getting brittle. So it's getting hard. It loses the contact to the surfaces when it's getting a little bit of movement. We are using in our glues only pure acrylates, no resins, which is very important. And that's why we can confirm that the Tescon Vana, the, Tesco, the Unitape, and the Tescon number no. 1 could last for more than 100 years as an air tightness tape, and we performed an independent test, an independent accelerating aging test at the University of Kassel for it. We stored the tapes for two years in a climate chamber under increased temperature and under increased relative humidity, and they found out after the two years that the connection to the surfaces that we've tested timber, intello, and the plastic, a P 
PE foil is still under a very good condition. This method of accelerated Asian test for tapes was developed at the University of Kassel and is now a part of a German standard published four weeks ago. But this German standard is only covering 17 years, not 100 years that we've performed. So the standard tape only has to fulfill the durability requirements for 17 years and we've extended it to 100 years to make sure that even after 50, 60, 70 years, the tape is still sticking to the membrane or to the wood fiber board or wherever. This is very important if you compare tapes. Some could mention during the next months or years that they are fulfilling the requirements of a German standard for air tightness tapes and they've performed an accelerated aging test. But only for 17 years, keep it in mind we have achieved 100 years, which is much more than 70 years, of course. There are tapes around that try to show a good adhesiveness, but they are only achieving it in combination with a weak cohesion. And that's why we, at the beginning, we ask you to put the tape onto the plywood, because I want to perform a test with you. Just try to get it off, so it's now there for two hours, three hours, try to get it off. It's very hard <laughs> to get it off. Try harder. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> no. So, you're destroying no, it, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, obviously, obviously, the glue is covering the surface of the rather rough plywood. Yeah, so the connection is rather good. Really, really good. So and here you've got a second strip. Please apply it on the plywood as well. Now. And right after the application, try to peel it off again. And it's rather easy in comparison. <laughs> so obviously, the tape needs a little bit of time to cover the hills and the valleys of the rough structure of the plywood. What length of time would you say? Sorry? What length of time? It depends on the circumstances, on those climate conditions. Yeah. So if it's rather cold, it takes longer. Here it's rather warm, so it, it works rather quickly. And uh, it depends on, on the structure of the surface. So if it's very rough, it takes longer for the glue to get into the structure and to cover the whole surface with glue. And that's what, so if somebody says, your tape, I applied your tape and it's very easy to peel it off, then you can say, of course it's easy to peel it off because it needs its time. And if you wait for two hours or three hours or maybe one day, <laughs> then the connection could carry a very high load, not after 20 seconds. This is very important. And now you can peel on the silver tape if you like. <laughs> it sticks there since yesterday. It's very easy. Usual duct tape. Ah, yeah. <laughs> so this is a usual duct tape and you are not able to compare these cheap duct tapes with air tightness tapes. It's a complete different method. A complete different kind of tape. So another influence during the building time, the tape could be affected by moisture, of course. Remember the people laying the street, so the street or plastering the walls, then you have got high relative humidity levels. The membranes could be covered with a thin layer of moisture. And here you can see the white tape, it's very easy to release it, while the blue tape, it's the uni tape, still stays on the membrane. And if you have a look at the smaller picture with the roof window, you can see small drops of water hanging everywhere. We do not recommend to use tapes on wet surfaces. Always clean the surface with a piece of cloth. They need to be clean and dry. But it is possible to glue a test conveyor tape like this under water. That's what I want to show you now. So I've got 
a piece of roof underlay, solid text plus. It's rather hard to glue because it's very rough. Hills and valleys a lot. So I put this underwater. And I've taken the tape from your table, so it's safe. It's not special prepared in advance and we produce it in our lab only for this occasion. And then, if I take the release paper off, I can put, you know, I can put it into water as well. So, use the press fix. <coughs> and what I described at the beginning, we want to have the material failure when we release the tape. So even if we apply the tape under wet conditions, we could achieve a very good bonding on a rough surface like a roof underlay. Well, if the solid text is wet, it won't take at all. I would not, I would not use tape on tapes on wet surfaces. Would it rain in the UK when you roof it? In Birmingham, not. In <laughs> Belfast, yes, you're right. <laughs> yes, but wait until the rain is gone. And for the roof underlays, we've got another solution available. We've got these connect strips yeah. included into the membrane, and they are, they, are, they are safe because you are releasing the foil uh, when it's dry between the overlapping. So this is much easier. So this is just for show the abilities of our special glue. And this brings me to another point. We've got a special glue that we are using on our tapes. It's a solid glue. And the advantages of the solid glue is that they are very durable. They are very durable and they are waterproof. So we can use, this, uh, we use it underwater. And about 15% of the tapes have a glue like this. So 85% they have a glue based on an acrylic dispersion. And the acrylic dispersion consists of acrylics dissolved in water. And for dissolving the acrylics in, in water, you need a emulsifier, emulsifier. emulsifier, yes, <laughs> emulsifier, because you want to achieve a homogeneous distribution of the acrylic of, of the acrylic uh, uh, material in the water. And this acrylic milk is during the production process applied on paper, PE foil, spun bone, and then it runs through an oven, 100 meter long, to get rid of the moisture again. But these, then you don't need the emulsifiers anymore, <laughs> um, but they are still in, the, still in the glue. And the problem is, once the glue gets in contact with water again, then it remembers, oh, there is an, an emulsifier, you know what the word what I wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> I tried it very hard to, to pronounce it, but it's very <laughs> exhausting. So, and they remember that there is a, a, a material in the glue that attracts water, and then they they are losing their strength. They are losing the contact. I've got a picture here. We compared a water-based glue with a solid glue of the Tescombana tape. The green one has the water-based glue and we, store, we, we put it to, onto a, a spun bone and we stored it for 12 hours underwater. And you can see that the glue on the green tape is, getting, is white, so it absorbed a lot of water during the 12 hours, while the Tescombana tape is still, haven't changed its color, and we've got this break within the material when we try to release it. So this is the advantage of our solid glue. A little bit more focusing on the details because we can find this situation it's everywhere. We can try to seal these cable bundles with a lot of Orcon F, which could lead to an air tightness. Sometimes it's not avoidable, but if we've got the chance to use a grommet for this, then it looks much better. And I'm pretty sure that the result is much easier to achieve, good air tightness. But well, there's only three cables there. Well, no, only three, but you can, you can pull, use... Pull that many cables in. You can use this grommet for 16. Yeah. And this is always a problem of the planning. Well, so if you've got more cables... Retrofitting, you've only got 
this much room to put 60 cables, yes. what do you do? Then you have to try to divide them in smaller parts then you can use the you can use the grommets or if you if you are able to if you're not if the cable is already there you can use a solution like this yeah. but you need space and you need cable that's the problem but otherwise you got space, so otherwise the only solution is this situation but it's not you know if you've got a customer and he sees oh, yeah. that you are using a lot of glue and it's not an, it's not a nice solution it's always better to have a solution available that seems to make sense. <laughs> Another problem is if you want to achieve air tightness at a single cable, then some companies or some craftsmen are using two strips of tapes. But once you pull on the cable, the air tightness is gone because it's not possible for the tape to stick at the membrane anymore and then there's a leakage. So this is the better situation. This could be even affected as well when pulling at the cable, but Probably it's a good solution to fix it to a button. If you're using a, a press fix, then you can apply the force that you need to get a very good bonding between the tape and the substrate. Here it's the internal even membrane. Soft. Sorry? Even if it's soft, even if it's soft, then you have to you, you can expand the intello a little bit, but you can apply the force, of course, mm -hmm. as well. So you don't need a hard decking to achieve a good bonding to the materials. So Always keep an eye on the details, which is very important. And always use materials that are suitable for your needs. The most important thing about tapes is the durability and how they can deal with water. So there will be always water on the building sites. And if you want to, if you want to have, achieve air tightness with your, in, in your constructions, with uh, long-lasting air tightness constructions, you should Think about which kind of tape you want to use. And from my point of view, the solid glues are having a lot of advantages concerning durability, um, resisting water tightness, and carrying high unforeseen loads. That's what I wanted to explain. And now your questions. <laughs> Thank you.